hi everyone welcome to my channel if you're watching this channel for the first time don't forget to like share comment and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so children so today's topic is about emergence of kingdoms and republics it is a chapter 10th in social studies 6th class okay in the previous chapter we read about uh, how tribal societies manage their efforts you would also have heard about the uh, kings and emperors who ruled large kingdoms let us find out how they came into being in early times so in the previous chapter we have read about the tribal societies okay the societies in tribal areas and um, how they manage the uh, all the their efforts what are the efforts that the people are getting and how the uh, what uh, village head uh, solved the problems so these are all we are learned in the previous chapters okay you would also have heard about the kings and emperors so you have already uh, have an idea about the kings and the emperors right next who ruled large kingdoms kingdoms means what here it is an area okay it is an area which is ruled by the king it is known as the kingdom okay kingdom means rajyamu okay let us find out how they came into being in the early times in the earliest times how they came okay so let us know about it in this chapter so the ganges valley from janapadas to maha janapadas okay so maha janapadas and janapadas the plain is called the gangetic valley so the gangetic valley is what it is a plain plain uh, that is called as valley as the ganga and yamuna rivers flow between the himalayas and the hills of the deccan plateau so the plain the valley which is formed from the ganga and yamuna rivers uh, which is flowing in between the himalayas and the hills of the deccan plateau okay that is that that it is called as agangetic valley uh, as the plain receives very rainfall rainfall it is very fertile these rivers bring silt from the himalayas and flow throughout the year so this plain uh, what which plain gangetic valley uh, this plain receives very high rainfall and it is very fertile these rivers bring silt so the sand particles it brings from the himalayas and flow throughout through the throughout the year so these rivers will be uh, flown throughout the year by that uh, it is very fertile soil which is suitable for the agriculture okay initially the people of different tribes settled down to practice agriculture in convenient parts of the valley so what valley gangetic valley is there no so there are different types of tribes tribes came there and settled down to practice the agriculture so they are practiced agriculture wherever the place is convenient to them in the different parts of the valley so they settled there and uh, started doing agriculture these tribes who were called jana in sanskrit <coughs> and the place where they settled was called janapada so the tribes who were came there to settle that people are called the tribal people called jana uh, it is a sanskrit word and the place uh, where the people are came to settle there so that place is called what janapada okay people began to settle along these rivers in large number of about 4000 years ago so it has been started in uh, since from the 4000 years yes uh, before 4000 years they started um, settling there and doing agriculture okay the use of tools made of stone copper bronze and iron led to gradual clearing of forest settlements and tilled the land to grow paddy and other crops so they started agriculture 4000 years ago the uses uh, whenever we are doing agriculture we use some of the tools right so uh, like that they used the tools made up of stone and copper bronze so so the, the, the they used what uh, they store um, the tools which are made up of stone copper bronze and iron for clearing the forest for cutting the trees and clearing the forest and uh, to make ready for the agriculture right settlements and tilled the land to grow paddy and other crops so they are tilled the land uh, tilled means what it is making ready for the uh, agriculture uh, to grow what paddy and the other crops large villages and towns developed in these parts and were inhabited by many people so large number of people came there and settled and uh, uh, like that after the, uh, the people came there and settled there the towns were developed uh, probably belonging to different uh, to many different tribes so lot of tribes uh, which are uh, from the 
different communities different tribes uh, different different tribes came there and settled in this palace large groups of such villages and towns were called mahajanapadas or big janapadas so janapada means what uh, small settlement so here uh, the big settlements and the large number of people came here and settled that is called what mahajanapadas or big janapadas did you understand children <coughs> How do we know about the Mahajanapada? So, how we know about the Janapadas? Let us know. We get to know much about these villages and towns from two kinds of sources. So, now to know about this Mahajanapadas, we have two different kinds of sources. Uh, from archaeological excavations in the different places and from the books composed during that period. So, what are the two uh, sources? Archaeological excavations and what uh, the books which is composed during that period. So, the books, the books which are written in that period and the uh, archaeological excavations. Archaeological excavations means what? The Tavakal. Akada. Archaeological, uh, archaeological departments wallu. <coughs> excavation lo dorkina vasthu batti malli. The books which are written by them. So, these are the two sources we are using to know about the Mahajanapadas, okay? Archaeologists have excavated hundreds of sites, the Ganges Valley, and have tried to know more about the lives of the people those days. So, uh, archaeologists have excavated hundreds of sites. So, they found hundreds of uh, uh, sites of uh, the Ganges Valley and have tried to know more about the lives of the people of those days. So, to know about the people of those days, the excavations, uh, the archaeological department excavated hundreds of sites in the Ganges Valley. They found excavations and the sites. So, they tried more to know more about the lives of the people, how they lived, what are the things they are using. So, for that, they so they found some sites to know about the people okay the books during that period were mostly composed by the followers of vedic traditions buddhist and jain monks so the books during that period some of the books were written we already discussed just now yes oh, so in that period we mostly composed by the followers of vedic traditions who write who written who written these books vedic traditions vedic traditions and the buddhist and jain monks so they composed some of the books even though they are religious books they tell about lot uh, the towns and villages about the kings and rulers of those times so they are not only saying about the tradition right uh, they are also saying about the different countries like greece here you have information drawn from the different sources so what are the books they are written archaeological sites what are the archaeological sites we have uh, in the time of mahajanapadas are delhi atranjikera kausambi near alhabad patna and ayodhya rajgir etc so these are the some of the sites uh, which is uh, seen by the archaeological departments uh, in the time of the mahajanapadas what are the uh, uh, archaeological sites are there delhi atranjikera Mahajanapadas, Delhi, Atranjikera, Kausambi, near Allahabad, Patna, Ayodhya, Rajgir. So, these are the archaeological sites. Okay. Some important books written during this period. So, some of the books written in that period. So, just now only we discussed uh, some of the books are composed by the Vedic traditions, Buddhist and Jains. Okay. What are the books? Upanishadas, Dharma Sutras, Diganikaya, Majjika Vanikaya. Hmm. Herodotus, History and Strabo etc. So, these are the important books written during the period. Okay. Villages in times of Mahajanapadas. So, how the villages are in the times of Mahajanapadas. We learnt from the books of those times that agriculture was managed by, managed by landowners called Grihapatis or Gahapatis. So, we have uh, known about the books which are written. Uh, in the times okay that agriculture was managed by landowners all the agricultural land was managed by the um, 
land owners that land owners are called what grahapatis or gahapatis who are grahapatis and gahapatis those are the land owners okay so who usually worked along with their family members on the fields but they also employed dasas or slaves those who were surrendered and made to serve the workers so they also working in the fields with their families and but they also employed dasas so dasas and slaves are the people who work uh, and to uh, serve the landowners and the king uh, who are surrendered okay and workers is called what workers is called brutakas okay or who worked on their fields and homes in return for wages so they are working in the fields and the homes for the wages some wealthy grihapatis had more land and slaves to work for them so uh, wealthy grihapatis who have the much economy much income and much properties um, like that wealthy who are the rich grihapatis are there they had more land and slaves to work for them so they need uh, many workers to work in these fields so they also have the slaves to work for them usually the large land owners became the headman of the villages so the, those who has the largest land so the uh, the land owner became the headman of the village okay he was the leader of the village like the gon patla and he was also used by the king to collect taxes from the villages so in the previous chapters gon patla we know about the gon patla is the head of the tribal community okay like that gon patla and he was also used by the king to collect the taxes from the village so to, to collect the taxes from the villagers so uh, who will the leader is there no gon patla like uh, like that grihapatis also collect the taxes from the villages land owners okay the head man <coughs> he also acted as the judge and sometimes as a policeman to maintain law in order in the village okay so sometimes he also acts as the judge sometime and the policeman to maintain the law in order to the village so what are the affairs there in the village so it is solved by the this the village headman okay in most villages there were craft person like blacksmith who made tools necessary for agriculture like pluff shears sickles axes arrows etc so in the most villages in the in our uh, village also different types of craftsmen are there like that in those times blacksmiths uh, the blacksmiths uh, who work with the iron okay it is called what blacksmiths who made tools necessary for agriculture what are the basic requirements for agriculture the tools required for the agriculture like pluff shears sickles axes arrows etc these were made by the blacksmith okay potters who made pots for cooking and storing grains for the cooking purpose and storing the grains so the potters make some pots so that is used for the storing of the grains and carpenters who make carts oh, bullock carts like that carts are made by the carpenters pluffs furniture etc and weavers who wove cloth for the villagers so weavers are the weaving the cloths for the villagers probably in grihapatis gave them grains in return for their products so whenever we are buying some goods from a shop we are uh, returning the, the we are giving the money and they are giving some goods like that so here they give some grains to the Uh, sellers and they take the products from them so in return they give some grains and they take out the products from the sellers okay these products were necessary for agriculture so what are the products which is wanted for the agriculture they took some agricultural uh, uh, grains and give it to the uh, land owners okay but the grihapatis may not have had the time or skill to make them so grihapatis the big land on the land owners they do not have some uh, uh, time to what or to work or to make the pots or whatever the items they wanted so they don't have the time or skill skill is not there and the time is not sufficient to them to make these uh, crafts okay but like that they are consulting the <coughs> sellers and the craftsmen who are there in the village and they give some grains to them and take out the whatever the necessary things used for the agriculture okay cities of mahajanapadas what are the cities of mahajanapadas let us discuss now look at the list of the cities in the table you have made what kind of people do you think lived in them cities of those times like today 
were mainly inhabited by poor workers some of them were slaves and servants while most of them are craft persons who made goods for sale what did they make they made beautiful iron fine pots which were in great demand in all the great towns they wove fine clothes which were brought by rich people for the mahajanapadas but also they made gold and silver jewelry they made vessels and tools of bronze copper and iron they made carts and furniture there were also innumerable other kinds of professionals like soldiers accountants masons horse trainers sweepers water carriers wood and ivory carvers of the things made by craft persons only a few articles like pots bricks iron and copper objects have come out in excavations we also know about them from books written in these times so here they made beautiful and fine pots which in great demand in the all great town so what are the pots which are made in the village they have, have the much demand in the cities and towns because in the cities and towns they much they don't have the time to make the pots right they the people who are uh, doing this job uh, making pots and they sell in the great towns okay they, so the, the by that the in the cities they have much demand uh, they work wove fine cloths which were brought by rich people of mahajanapadas also so some of the people wove the cloths which is useful for the mahajanapadas okay they made gold and silver jewelry so they made silver and gold jewelry also they made vessels and tools of bronze so the vessels made up of bronze and the tools also made up of bronze or uh, copper and iron so they made wooden carts and furniture what are they wooden carts and the furniture made by the carpenters there were also innumerable other kinds of professionals not only this other kinds of professionals are so there here like soldiers accountants masons horse trainers sweepers water carriers wooden ivory carvers of all these things made by craft persons only a few articles like pots bricks iron and copper objects have come out excavations not only this whenever the archaeological department uh, found some things like pots bricks iron and copper objects in their excavations okay we also know about them from books written in these times so we know about these in the books which are written in those times okay so here is a picture is given 10.1 painted greyware plates and bowls are the most common vessel made out of painted greyware these are extremely fine to touch these were found before the times of maha janapadas so it is also found in the excavations okay there were great traders who purchased the produce of the craft persons and grihapatis and sold them in distant lands at a huge profit they also brought the special articles of those lands and sold them in their own maha janapadas they took their merchandise in caravans with a large number of animals like oxen donkeys and camels they traveled day and night for weeks and months across rivers plains hills and deserts they made so much profit that they could live in palaces with dozens of servants and slaves serving them so there were great traders who purchased the produce of the craft persons and grihapatis and sold them in distant lands at the huge profit for the uh, for profit purpose they are uh, Uh, traveling to different kinds uh, different parts of the countries so they for the selling of their products what are the products they made by the craft persons they uh, roam uh, in different countries and they sell the uh, produced produces and the great traders who purchased the produce of craft persons and grihapatis and sold them in distant lands at a huge profit they also brought the special Uh, articles of those lands and sold them in their own janapadas what are the uh, special articles which are made at uh, in uh, by the people so that must be sold in the maha janapadas only they took their merchandise in caravans with a large number of animals like oxen donkeys and camels so by taking the oxen donkeys and camels and they keeping the products which are made by them uh, and went it for the selling they traveled day and night so they are traveling day and night time and weeks and months across the rivers so they traveling by traveling and traveling for the weeks and months also across rivers plains hills and deserts so they they, they are traveling from the desert 
traveling from the plains hills whatever the place there they made so much profit that they could live in palaces with dozens of servants and slaves serving them so by this profit only they are maintaining the palaces and with the dozens of servants and slaves serving them okay king's army and taxes most of the mahajanapadas were ruled by kings these kings had an army of their own to ensure that people followed their orders and no other king attacked their kingdom most of the mahajanapadas were ruled by the kings so these mahajanapadas were ruled by the kings these kings had an army of their own to ensure that people followed their orders and no other king attacked their kingdom for saving from the other kings and the other army uh, uh, by that they have the own king and they the people the mahajanapadas should listen to the words of the king to uh, what to save themselves uh, that people followed their orders what are the orders given by the king so they must to be followed and uh, no other king attacked their kingdom so and they must uh, save them from the other kings and the what other armies so they lived in capital cities and tried to build strong fortresses of wood so they lived in the capital cities and tried to build strong fortresses strong fortresses means what దుర్గము అని అంటాం కదా సో అట్లాంటివి అవి దేంతో కట్టే వాళ్ళు వుడ్ స్టోన్స్ బ్రిక్స్ అండ్ మడ్ సో బై దట్ బై ద యూజింగ్ ఆఫ్ వుడ్ స్టోన్ బ్రిక్ అండ్ మడ్ సో దే బిల్డ్ ద ఫార్టీసెస్ ఆల్ దీస్ రిక్వైర్డ్ ఎలాట్ ఆఫ్ మనీ ఫర్ ద బిల్డింగ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ వీ వాంట్ సమ్ మనీ సో నాట్ సమ్ మనీ లాట్ ఆఫ్ మనీ వీ వాంట్ ఫర్ బ్రిక్స్ వాట్ మడ్ అండ్ స్టోన్ సో దిస్ ఫర్ దిస్ వీ వాంట్ మచ్ మనీ దిస్ సోల్జర్స్ and their families had to be provided for that so, uh, for uh, building this who, who soldiers and their families had to provide for so they must uh, provide the whatever the uh, money uh, to build the this fortresses okay the brick makers who made lakhs of bricks had to be paid for thousands of men and women who worked to construct this public buildings to had to be paid wages so the people who are making the bricks had to be paid for the thousands of men so in the brick kiln they are working thousands of men and women uh, to construct these public buildings they work hard and paid for the wages the gon patla also had to defend villages from outsiders so the gon patla who is there the head of headman so he must defend uh, the village from outsiders so to save the people of their village from the outsiders gon patla had defend at such times all the villagers would came together and fight on behalf of the village so all the villagers should fight on uh, behalf of the uh, gon patla we also saw that he met in the expenses of entertaining guests and holding festivals from extra income he got from the one day labor of the villages on this his fields but such income was far too little for a tribal headman to become rich or powerful so for the entertaining of the um, uh, what people who came uh, for the king who came for his village and the gon patla who is the headman is there so he must spend some money uh, money to impress the king like the, the ordinary people of the tribe would only support the headman or obey his commands if they were convinced that it was in the interest of all so he the people must be convinced by the headman gon patla and uh, whatever the money wanted to spend for this so all the people will uh, discuss about this and uh, obey the words of the headman the picture is from sculpture panels of sanchi sat stupa which were made about 2000 years ago how can you identify the king so here the picture is given a king riding out a town fort the large kings of janapadas were different from such tribal headmen and chiefs so the kings is there in mahajanapadas were different from the such tribal headmen and chiefs so they are different from the tribal headmen and chiefs the kings collected taxes from the people so they are collecting the taxes from the people they had officers who would collect taxes from grihapatis the craft persons and traders so they have the officers 
to collect the tax from the grihapatis and the craft persons and traders if anyone refused to pay taxes they could be punished by the soldiers of the king so who are not giving the taxes they will be punished by the king these officers and army were employees of the king so army uh, people are the employees of the king therefore they were bound to follow these orders and the king could ensure that his commands were obeyed by the common people the king uh, gave some instructions uh, some words and the people must to obey for that words only commands many kings wanted to be more powerful and wealthy they could do this in two ways so all the kings wanted to become more powerful and wealthy as it is right uh, they could do in these two ways so what are the ways to become more powerful and wealthy so by increasing the taxes imposed on the people and by conquering neighboring kingdoms the kings began to collect regular taxes from the grihapatis who cultivated the land the grihapatis had to divide their crops into six equal parts and give one part of the one part to the king this was called baga so becoming more powerful and wealthy so they must collect the more taxes from the grihapatis and who are cultivating the land so they uh, uh, they grihapatis had the large amount of land and uh, it must be kept in the six equal parts and uh, by, by that one part is given to the king itself this was called baga so these parts are called what baga craft persons also had to pay taxes often by the working free of charge for the king for one day every month in a, every month so one day is they must work for the kings only okay herders of cattle and sheep to had give the animal produce to king in the form of tax so the animal herders who are there uh, the cattle must be given to the king in the tax okay now traders were also made to pay taxes on the goods they sold the traders also must pay the taxes what are the goods they are sold hunters and gatherers in the nearest nearby forest areas too had to bring forest produce like hide wood etc so were uh, living in the forest they also uh, paid uh, pay the tax for the king in the uh, what like hide wood etc so they also paying the tax in the hide wood etc in this way the kings had a variety of goods with them which they obtained as taxes so uh, by that different people are giving different kinds of things by that variety of goods in them where they obtained as taxes the, the king had different different goods which is obtained as taxes during this period the use of coins had just begun so in this time only the, the uh, beginning of the using of coins okay some of the taxes were probably in the form of coins some of the taxes were paid by the people in the form of what coins historians feel that these kings would have persuaded the farmers to grow more crops and adopt better methods of cultivation and irrigation so that production would increase and they get more taxes historians feel that these kings would have persuaded the farmers to grow to grow more crops and adopt better methods of cultivation and irrigation so the people who are uh, doing the agriculture they must uh, listen to the words of the kings for the adopting of better methods of cultivation and irrigation by that production is getting high so they are saying that if you follow these rules you may get uh, large amount of produce from your land would increase they would get more taxes by that they are thinking that they may, they will get that more taxes similarly they have encouraged the traders of their kingdoms to trade more in distant places the kings also wanted to village headman to collect taxes on the behalf this may have helped many headmen to increase their power and resources in the villages so by obeying the words of the king so all the people giving the more taxes to the uh, headmans and these headmen is listen to the king's words by that all the kings they may get more power and uh, getting even uh, more rich okay the kings were also constantly waging wars each other so that they could bring more territories under their rule so kings fight each other the other king fight with the our king and by that they 
bring more territories territories under their rule so by that um, the by the fighting they may get uh, much land so occupied much land and the territories under this rule this war war wars were probably fought by paid armies but they also harmed ordinary people by destroying crops and burning villages or looting them so by this wars uh, all the uh, normal people get destroyed their crops and burning villages and looting them so this war must be done the, the this war is done by the paying the people uh, paying the soldiers the uh, army uh, fight for the kings uh, and the other kings they fight each other and they are destroying the people's life often people of the defeated kingdoms were enslaved and sold off to grihapati traders and official so in this wars the people um, got sold off to grihapatis some of the people were sold to the grihapatis and traders and officials for the slaving purpose magadha a powerful kingdom so here a kingdom is there magadha it is a kingdom uh, it is a powerful kingdom okay do you have magadha in your list above so we have made a list of kingdoms yes uh, in that magadha is the powerful kingdom you may have noted that it spread both sides of the ganga so magadha where the magadha kingdom is there the both sides of the ganga these rivers made the land very fertile and grihapatis could irrigate their lands easily so the ganga river has the fertile land by that grihapatis irrigate their lands easily by this the grihapatis the land owners get easy uh, easy crop and the fertile land is there for growing up the crops the rivers were also used for transporting goods and armies so this ganga river is there no that is used for the transporting of the goods and the armies parts of the magadha were forested so uh, the parts of the magadha was forest area elephants were captured from there and trained for fighting in the wars so they bring the elephants from the forest and they are trained for the fighting in the wars wood from the forest was used for building fortresses and palaces and chariots for so for making the palaces and chariots and fortresses so they cut the trees and uh, trees from the forest and made the fortresses and palaces and chariots chariots means what rathalu okay in the southern parts of magadha there were iron ore deposits which could be used for making weapons so in the southern parts of the magadha uh, we find iron ore deposits which is used for the making of weapons etc okay all this enabled magadha to emerge as a powerful very powerful kingdom so by this the magadha is called what powerful kingdom bimbisara and his son ajata satru were early kings who built the powerful power of magadha so who are their bimbisara and his son so bimbisara is father son is ajata satru were early kings who built the powerful power of magadha so these were the two kings okay mahapadma nanda was another powerful ruler in magadha so another powerful ruler is there who is mahapadma nanda okay all these kings used their armies to conquer other kingdoms so to occupy the other kingdoms or these armies were used to occupy the other kingdoms during this time maha mahapadma nanda the kingdom the kingdom extended from the northwest part of the india to odisha so he conquered the land northwestern part of india to odisha so he conquered the land in the wars we should remember that not all mahajanapadas were ruled by kings as in magadha so in some areas the kings were more like gone headman who relied upon the ordinary people and performed rituals and festivals for the welfare of the entire kingdom so we should remember that not all mahajanapadas were ruled by the kings as Mag- in the magadha so in the magadha in the magadha kingdom uh, the people were ruled by the kings so in the other parts of this janapadas uh, some of the people were ruled by the headman and the gone headman okay so and the, they perform the rituals and the festivals of welfare to the of the en- entire kingdom so what are the festivals which is celebrated uh, in the uh, pe- uh, villages uh, that were held uh, that was relayed upon the ordinary people and uh, the el- headman who is the headman is there so he must be, uh, see the what are the requirements need for the festival making okay vajji egana the 
వజ్జి మహాజనపద వాజ్ టు నార్త్ ఆఫ్ ద మగద అండ్ ఇట్ హ్యాడ్ గనా ఫ్రమ్ ద గవర్నమెంట్ గనా వాజ్ రూల్డ్ బై ద గ్రూప్ ఆఫ్ రూలర్స్ ఇన్స్టెడ్ ఆఫ్ సింగిల్ రూలర్ సో గన వజ్జి మహాజనపద వాజ్ ద నార్తన్ ఆఫ్ ద మగద సో ఇట్ ఈస్ మగద ఈజ్ అ కింగ్డమ్ నార్త్ పార్ట్ ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ వాట్ వజ్జి మహా జనపద ఇట్ హ్యాడ్ గానా ఫ్రమ్ ద గవర్నమెంట్ ఫ్రామ్ ద గవర్నమెంట్ గానా వాజ్ రూల్డ్ బై ద గ్రూప్ ఆఫ్ రూలర్స్ ఇన్స్టెడ్ ఆఫ్ ఎ సింగిల్ రూలర్ సో ఇన్ ద అదర్ కింగ్డమ్స్ ఎ సింగిల్ రూరల్ ఈజ్ దేర్ బట్ ఇన్ ది ఇన్ హియర్ ఇన్ ద గానా ద గ్రూప్ ఆఫ్ రూలర్స్ గ్రూప్ ఆఫ్ రూలర్స్ రూల్ ద కింగ్డమ్ ఓకే సమ్టైమ్స్ ఈవెన్ థౌజండ్స్ ఆఫ్ మెన్ రూల్డ్ టుగెదర్ అండ్ ఈచ్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ వర్ కాల్డ్ రాజా so the so same kingdom is ruled by the thousands of men okay and ruled together each of them was called raja so each of them are called what raja they perform rituals met and took decisions on issues of common interest and assemblies through discussion and debate so they were discussed and made assemblies and uh, they are uh, making the decisions and to perform the rituals and they are keeping the meeting okay they are meeting and uh, taking the decisions and the discussions and the debates however women slaves and wages wage earners could not participate in these assemblies so in these assemblies uh, who are women and slaves and wage earners who are the wage earners and the slaves women they are not participating in these the assemblies okay buddha and mahavira belonged to ganas and became famous teachers respected in all mahajanapadas here buddha and mahavira belong to ganas ganas means what the group of people ruled a same kingdom okay so here buddha and mahavira all uh, belonging to the ganas and became famous teachers respected in all mahajanapadas so these uh, buddha and mahavira are the uh, respected te- famous teachers in this mahajanapadas okay even though the kings tried to conquer the ganas they remained active for more than 1500 years ago even though kings tried to so they tried to conquer the ganas also they remained active for more than 1500 years ago so it is not uh, possible for the kings to conquer the ganas okay so here the lesson ends let us see the keywords kingdom republic janapada mahajanapada dasas vrutakas grihapatis so kingdom means what it is an area which is ruled by the king okay janapada janapada is the place where the settlement is done by the people jana mahajanapada is a uh, what large settlement mahajanapada dasas or the slaves brutakas means what wage earners grihapatis means what large owners uh, grihapatis means what land owners thank you so much for listening uh, please like this video share to your friends subscribe to our channel for other videos click the bell icon for more updates thank you so much